Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Monty Love. I hope you guys are all staying healthy, happy, and blessed during this time in the world. I know if y'all watching the news and finding out what's going on with these polls, what's going on with Nevada, like why can't they just hurry up and tell us what's our fate for the rest of our four years in the future. I hope y'all could take a break and watch my video and you know, they learn something, kick back, relax, have a drink, have some wine, eat some good food, sit on your couch or whatever. <laughs> this uh, video is going to be a part of a series. I think it'll be like a three part, three video series that I want to talk about and it'll be um, on relationships. I hope you guys enjoy, stay tuned and you know, learn something. So this first video is going to be be asking you this question are you mentally ready for a relationship please do not enter a relationship with someone if you are not able or ready to do any of these things all right these are three things that uh are going to test you and you'll figure out whether or not you're ready or capable of having a relationship right now in this time of your life okay so number one Open your heart and mind for love. Some people cannot drop down their guard to let someone in. If that kind of person is in a relationship, not letting someone in is just going to hurt someone else. So if this is you, work in yourself and process your previous trauma before entering a relationship. You know, like when people hurt people, hurt people, you know, and you may think you are ready or you just might like and lo or love this person so much that you're willing to try. But if you are in your heart and soul is not there yet, don't do it. No matter how much you love that person, because you are, you are some way, somehow are going to hurt them. So just do not do it. Working yourself, get therapy, pray, you know, read books. You know, work on yourself spiritually and mentally first before uh, embarking on a journey with another person. All right. Now, two, trust your partner. Do you have trust issues? Did an ex-lover break your trust? Did they cheat on you? Well, I'm going to blow your mind now. If you are in a new relationship with someone and they did not break your trust or they haven't cheated then they have not given you a reason to not trust them. If you cannot trust your partner because an ex cheated on you and you, on you, and then I have something to tell you. You are not ready for a relationship. You will sabotage your relationship sooner or later because they might eventually get tired of proving themselves to you to be that they are faithful to appease you. It's truly exhausting to carry someone else's baggage that they didn't put on you. That, seriously, it is truly exhausting to carry somebody else's baggage. I know some people say, you know, if you love me, you'll love everything that comes with me. It is not your new partner's job to help you process the, dra the trauma that you are dealing with from somebody else, you know? Just because your ex cheated doesn't mean that your present relationship has cheated as well. You know, you had to process that drama, that trauma yourself. Seriously, that goes along with the other, the last thing. You have to process your trauma yourself. Seriously. Because if you start thinking someone is cheating so much, thinking like a lot of people say, then I should have just well cheated because you keep treating me like I cheated. Stop assuming everybody's your ex. You have to let it go. Treat every new relationship as a new relationship. Learn and adapt to that person only, period. <laughs> okay, now, number three. Are you ready to be faithful? Some people really were notorious cheaters in the past when they were young. And as they grow older, they mature and they see the error in their ways. Now, they may actually be ready to commit to one person. Now, this is where we, it gets complicated. 
Some people may truly want the perks of a relationship, but still want to run around on the outside. Mm, it's, it is true. That's toxic behavior, and you can really hurt someone. If you are not ready to be 100% committed to one person, please stay single. Now, if you're in a relationship, that does not mean you won't be tempted from what's out on the outside. That's true. These Instagram models are gorgeous. You're going to see them. A lot of people will want to, are obsessed with the social media. They want to slide into DMs and holla at these chicks. Don't do it. Stay loyal. Um, it's, a, it's how you manage when you are tempted. It's true. You have to manage the temptation. You have to acknowledge it, process it, and do not act on it. If you can manage to not act on the temptation, then you are ready. And if you're open, if you are in an open or polyamorous relationship, obviously this does not apply to you. I do not know anything about that kind of stuff. I am so sorry. My channel will not be on that because this this is not what I practice. But let's talk about how you manage the temptation of seeing others on the outside. Managing temptations is something, it's just basically practicing self-control body who is tempted. This, just don't act on it. You can see a beautiful female or male or whatever in between and just not act on it. You could process it and move on from it. Just do not act on it. I think also if you are having a lot of trouble with this, I think it's important to if you have a, like a mature enough relationship with your partner to discuss this with them and maybe you guys can um, do something. Maybe your partner needs to switch up their luck, you know, some way because sometimes seeing the same thing every day can get old. Now, four, let go of certain expectations you have for this relationship. It's okay to have standards, but it's not okay to have unrealistic expectations. I think the expectations we have for our lovers are born out of previous relationships. So, for example, you want your current lover, Susie, to cook breakfast for you every morning because your ex, Josie, cooks all the time. Now, Susie works two jobs. She doesn't have time to cook 24-7 while Josie was only in school and stayed with, stayed with you at your place. So there's two problems here. Problem one being you're expecting something from your partner. Problem two, you're, par you're comparing them both. Comparing relationships are extremely toxic behavior. You should not expect Susie to cook for you just because Josie did. You have to remember why things didn't work out with Josie. Remember, Josie was crazy and she showed up at your job unannounced and made a scene because she thought you were cheating on her with your coworker. Now, Susie might not cook all the time. But, for, but she sometimes does. You both share the duty of cooking. Susie is calm and trusting. She is clean and she makes you happy. She makes you laugh. She may not cook all the time, but she plays video games with you and watches football. Josie hated sports. So don't compare these two people because you miss Josie's famous fried chicken. If you want it so badly, you could tell Susie how much you want it that some fried chicken and she'll probably will guarantee she'll make you make it for you one day because she loves you that much <laughs> and it won't taste exactly like Josie's but it will be good after she makes it a few times with experience it will get even better because she has her own unique recipe so I know that's a crazy scenario but I realized this is something that's a common thing in some relationships I've seen and like some friends or whatever the comparison thing it is a very toxic thing now I let me um rephrase when I my statement out for a little bit when I say you should not have expectations I mean it's okay to have some standards for people and you want them to meet them I just don't think it's a healthy practice to expect something out of somebody uh, like all the time you can't put your own like complete i can't say it. how do i refer say this you can't just expect something from somebody just because you want it or 
that's what you assume. Do never assume something from somebody. Everybody is their own unique person. Communication is very important. If you want something from someone and it's reasonable, you can always talk about it. But just expecting something from someone because somebody in your previous relationships has done that is not good. But having standards is okay. Like standards, I want a man that has a job. I want a man that, you know, is a little tidy, you know, clean and tidy, you know, that's nice. You know, that treats people with respect, treats waiters with respect, you know, has a relationship with their family and has a relationship with God. You know what I'm saying? It's not okay to um, expect this man to, I don't know, buy your flowers every Tuesday just because your ex-boyfriend Joe did it. That is not okay. Everybody has a different love language and everybody has a different way of expressing their love. That brings us to the end of uh, the five, I'm sorry, four ways to know if you are mentally ready for a relationship. Now, if you practice these four ways I'm like, and just work on these four things, I'm pretty sure you'll be almost just about ready. You just have to really deep, dive deep into yourself and ask yourself these questions before you can hurt someone. I highly recommend going to therapy and praying to help you work on these things. Trauma is a hard thing to break. It builds a brick house around the heart. Some people are willing to break down these walls and some people aren't that patient. It's never okay to put your trauma on another person. So I recommend you work on these things before you start looking for love. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys subscribe, like, and comment. And you know, stay in tunes. Turn on that little bell for notifications so you can keep up with my next videos. Peace out.